GDevelop 5.3 is here. GDevelop is being constantly updated with smaller patches all of the time. So 5.3 is really all of the work that's been done between 5.2 and now, where there's been enough change to add an entire 0.1 to the version number. Like most patches, this update comes with tiny improvements, and then there were extensions like the 3D Particle Emitter being released, and the in-app purchases extension being updated to work with Google Play Billing version 5. And there were new asset packs added, like tileable ground textures, and the Dungeon Castle Mighty Bundle, as well as some bug fixes. But for now, let's jump into the bigger ticket feature items, like object folders, which is something the community has been asking for for a long time. They've replaced the old tag system and can be used to sort and organize your objects just like you would on your own computer. And they work for both scene objects and global objects. And for anyone wondering how they replace tags in the actions and conditions searching for objects, well now you can search by folder to find the objects that you want. Next up is a new variable syntax, which basically means this is now replaced with just this. For declared variables, you no longer need to type out global variable bracket variable name bracket. So as long as a variable is declared, it will show up in the autocomplete when you're typing things in. And this should make variables way easier to use for beginners, but also make it a lot faster for experienced users to do what they were doing before. So it requires less typing, it's easier to read, and it's far more condensed. Next is Project Collaboration. This feature is only for the startup and business plan, so you need one of those subscriptions in order to use this. It's an online feature that allows multiple people to work on a single project. So if you have a cloud project, you can add a collaborator and they'll be able to see and edit that cloud project. Next up is Steamworks Integration, built directly into the engine, which is really exciting. This can help people with achievements, networking, matchmaking, user-generated content, getting player information, and can help as an anti-cheat or DRM. It is a huge deal for those of us trying to release on Steam. It should make that process a lot easier. And then there's premium game templates, which is a new thing being announced where game templates can now be sold. So not only will you be able to make money by selling art and music assets, now you'll be able to do that with full game templates. The next thing is support for Unicode, which means emojis, accented characters, Arab, Chinese, Korean, Japanese, and more will now work as valid characters in Engine. Some platforms will have trouble with non-UTF-8 characters, so be careful naming your assets with those characters, but in Engine, you'll be able to use everything all the way up to emojis. And then there's a big one that I'm really excited about, and that's that there's no longer duplicate actions and conditions for every different kind of object. So if you want to scale an object, it's not scale a tiled object or scale a sprite object or scale a 3D object, it's just scale. And that's been done for every kind of action and condition in the engine, which makes searching for things manually so much easier. And of course it's going to help with beginners who wouldn't know the difference. Then, for the education plan subscription, there's the classroom view, where the admin of the education plan can now open up student projects in a view-only mode so they can see what their students are working on and maybe where they're struggling. And the last thing is going to help a lot of people, because before, if you were using a cloud project, there was no autosave. So the newest feature is an autosave for cloud projects. And for anybody who's been saved by autosave, when they're working on something and they exit accidentally, or the power goes out or something, you know just how awesome this feature is, and how much it's going to help people who use the cloud builds to build their game. Thank you to everyone involved in getting us from 5.2 to 5.3. If you want to see all of the things that were left out of this video, they're in the description in the patch notes. But for now, I think we're all looking forward to 5.4.